All right, Robert, where are we at? We're at St. John Cemetery south of Eureka, and this is the cemetery where a number of my uh, ancestors and relatives are buried. Uh, this particular grave here is my grandfather's grave who died when he was 48 years old, uh, the result of an injury during butchering and uh, consequently uh, uh, being infected with blood poisoning. So uh, he tried every everything uh, that they knew locally and he made a final trip to Minneapolis to some doctors, but it was too late, so he uh, succumbed to that. His uh, wife then was determined to stay on the homestead, uh, on the farm, and uh, uh, make sure that all of the children had land to begin farming, and she was successful in doing that. So we admired her for that. But, now, I didn't get to know either one of, uh, of my dad's parents, my grandmother and grandfather. They both died. Uh, he died at 48, and she was in her low 50s when she died. So, uh, actually, the, my my dad and his brother were the main people, you know, to do the f farm work. Uh, my dad was 15 when his dad died, and uh, his older, one of his older brothers was two years older than than my dad, and they continued the farm. They had some younger siblings that helped also, but uh, they were the main men of the farm, so to speak. So it was quite quite successful in uh, accomplishing that goal. So Now, do you know where your grandfather was born? He was born in Russia, in Glickstal, and came to the United States with uh, one of his brothers, and uh, homesteaded about three miles west of here, and we'll be going to that place later on. But uh, he came over, uh, I don't remember uh, how old he was when he came, but uh, he was quite quite young. He must have been in his uh, early 20s when he came. He was uh, married, and there was some confusion as to whether he had uh, was married to his second or third wife. He lost his first wife in Russia during childbirth. The uh, wife and child died, and he remarried. And supposedly, there was uh, records that just aren't clear about that, but uh, some of the older relatives told us when we were putting together a history book that he was married again, and she died in, uh, in childbirth again. The child survived, and then he married his mother's maid. Supposedly, we were assuming that he married her to be able to immigrate to the United States, because alone with a child, he probably wouldn't have been allowed to uh, come to the United States. So that is an assumption on our part. There's nobody that really could verify it. So, OK? And then uh, I have uh, uh, an uncle that uh, was buried right close here. Uh, he was uh, 15 years old when he died. He caught pneumonia. My dad said he went out to the pasture to uh, get the horses one morning and ran after the horses and caught a cold and consequently uh, resulted in pneumonia and died from that a short time later. Uh, just beyond over here, there's a double grave, and that's uh, my dad's two sisters, or my aunts, died during the influenza outbreak during the war, First World War. The first child that died, uh, they were ready to bury her when the second child succumbed, so they postponed the funeral and got the second child ready and they buried him in the same grave. So they they were both quite young when they died. I don't re recall the exact age, but uh, I believe one of them was eight and another one was uh, about the same age, you know, just a year or two, one way or the other. And that's, other, other than that, the, there are some other relatives buried, uh, my sister, I forgot that. 
a sister, it's the uh, oldest sister, she was the first child my parents had. She died as an infant and uh, she was only two months old when she died and uh, they don't know for sure, they attribute it to convulsions I guess, so uh, it was quite traumatic for uh, my mother and, and my dad, but uh, life went on. As, okay, the cemetery we're in, St. John's, the church actually was just on the south side of the cemetery and we had a, a big barn along with the church that was used for the horses and you know for when we came to church and I, I don't recall driving to church with the horses that often because I was quite young by the time uh, I got to remember things we had cars so but I, the barn was there and we had a lot of fun playing around the barn and in the barn yeah. now, there's another grave over here. My grandmother was buried here. Uh, she, like I said earlier, she died when she was in her early 50s. And that was my, my de uh, grandfather's second or third wife. We're not positive. We haven't found any uh, any news or any records that really substantiate one thing or the other. So, but we, we think it, it was his third wife and uh, he had, grandfather had married her uh, to be able to come to the United, immigrate to the United States with a child because he had uh, his second wife died in childbirth and the child survived and he wanted to come to the United States along with uh, one of his relatives, so we assume that he married Christina, which was his his mother's maid, actually. So we we assume that it was a marriage of convenience more than than what we call love today. But but they did have a, a large family even after that. So evidently there was more to it than than just convenience. Uh, the other grave over here was my uncle's wife, first wife, and, and I don't recall why, why she died, but uh, she was married here. This, this was, uh, my recollection, uh, was the beginning of uh, the tombstones here, and uh, then later on it went further to the south. So she actually, uh, I don't recall what what her her cause of death is, but uh, uh, he remarried and uh, he lived uh, just north of uh, where my dad lived, north and a, a mile east. Uh, he was the oldest in the family, my dad's oldest brother. So uh, he was he was the main person, but my dad and his next brother were the ones that carried on the farm after his, his dad had died. So I guess that's about all I'd have here. Well, do you remember what it was, what a typical funeral was like when you were growing up? Uh, no, we did not go to funerals as children. Church was small and usually it was a large funeral. So if we did go to it, we'd be out in the car waiting for it to, be done with, you know, so uh, I don't recall it. The only funeral that I can really recall is my grandfather's on my mother's side, and that was in the uh, in 1934. I was eight years old, and of course the funeral was at home. Uh, they did the services at the house, and I remember dust storm, so that, that was impressive, you know, that stayed with me, but uh, I really don't recall very many funerals here in this church at all. All right. You mentioned that the church used to stand here that you used to go to. Yes. We went to, this church was here until 1948 when it dissolved and some of the members went to Hosmer, some went to Baudel, and some went to Zion Eureka. My family went to Eureka. We were going to school at Eureka by that time, high school, and so not grade school, where grade school stayed 
out in the country until, oh, I don't recall, 1960-something. What do you remember about this church? What was it like going here? It was great. I, uh, I recall the traditions in the church, the little kids that have to sit in the front pew, girls on the left, the boys on the right, and then the elders right behind the little ones, and then gradually on back into the back pews were the teenagers and the, you know, the single people. But the, you had to behave up there. Your parents weren't right next to you like they are now. You know, you didn't go to church as a family. Uh, it was just uh, more or less uh, uh, the men always sat on one side, of course. And, but if you didn't behave, the elders would wrap you on your head or snap your ears or something, and then you were in trouble when you got home. <laughs> Were you, did you um, get baptized here? Yes, I was baptized here. I not married, but the confirmation uh, that we had then was in Bowdle. This was one of the Three Point Parish out of Bowdle. And uh, of course, then when we joined Eureka, then this ceased to exist at all. But uh, we would have uh, a minister every third Sunday. Uh, other than that, my dad was one of the uh, deacons, I guess, and they'd take turns reading the lessons. So we got to uh, listen to the sermon at least twice because my dad would practice at home and, and we had to sit and, and listen <laughs> to it. <laughs> so, so we knew what, was, what the sermon was about before we got there. And they actually didn't preach, they had printed sermons that they just read. And then, of course, Sunday school, we had our little verses that we had to recite and catechism and Bible stories that the, the Sunday school teachers would uh, question us and because there were always questions at the end of the lessons and basically we had to be able to answer those questions. It was, I guess, fun, <laughs> interesting. I bet. So religion was very important to your family. Religion was important to all of the people that settled in this area, particularly German, from the German Russians who were very religious. Uh, I know in, in doing the uh, family history, you uh, run across different, uh, different segments where sometimes they said they weren't that religious, they, they liked their wine better than their religion, but, uh, but they, they were religious, no doubt. They had to rely on their religion to sustain all the uh, hardships that they went through. Okay. Is there anything else you remember about going to school or church here? Yeah, the Christmas programs, particularly, uh, they were quite a, quite interesting. We'd have practices uh, for weeks prior to it, and usually in the evenings, we had. Uh, gas lights, I guess they called them, and uh, we would come and, and practice for an hour or two. And then the Christmas program, the church was usually packed, and uh, we'd have to take our turn reciting our little verses or dialogues. We actually had little dialogues and declams or whatever they called them. The one thing that really stands out in my memory too was that they had the actual Christmas trees and the candles on it, fire on the candles. So there were always one or two people on guard just in case, you know. I, to this day, don't, uh, don't understand why the place didn't burn down sometime. But, and then the, the other thing I remember, uh, our mission fest, uh, they, there was, uh, it was a three-point parish, as I mentioned earlier, and uh, there was almost like a contest between the three churches as to who could raise the most funds for mission work or who had the uh, largest attendance. So it was packed full. In fact, the, usually the kids were, had to be outside once it got full and, and uh, we had missionaries from New Guinea or wherever you know, speak, speak to the uh, congregation. And the Mission Fest was uh, a long service. We had service in the morning, and then 
went home for dinner and then had to come back in the afternoon and quite often they had to cut the speaker off so they'd get home to do chores. So <laughs> it got to be a long afternoon for the kids and that that's when the, we as youngsters had fun playing in the barn and around the barn and so on. So. Do you remember any specific games you played? Uh, I suppose the usual uh, Andy over or hide and go seek or tag and so on, but uh, we had to be sure it didn't interfere with the service. So. <laughs> All right. Do you remember anything else you'd like to share? Well, confirmation we had at the main parish in Baudel, and that again was one of those long sessions. Uh, nowadays, you know, the confirmation is very, very short, not much more than a church service with a few questions. But when I got confirmed, our minister uh, was sure that we knew the catechism. We, we had to be able to recite the whole catechism. He'd ask for certain parts of it, and we had to be able to get up and recite that. We'd have to be able to recite uh, different Bible verses or songs if he'd ask for a song number so and so and we had to be able to recognize it and get up and recite the whole thing. And so it took quite quite a long time. Uh, they didn't stop for lunch so sometimes we didn't get finish the service until 2 or 2.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> so we, kids got kind of restless and hungry and, and so on. So that, that I remember and of course prior to confirmation day we had our confirmation instruction. We had classes every Saturday for, uh, we had to go to classes on Saturdays for three years prior to being confirmed. And then we had two or three weeks midsummer instructions prior for two, at least two years prior to confirmation. Other than that, you wouldn't be confirmed at all. So it's changed quite a bit. And that's, that's about it. Right, can you tell us where we're at? Now, we're at Zion Cemetery, south, just south of, of uh, downtown. And uh, we're at the gravesite of my uh, son-in-law, husband of my youngest daughter, uh, Lonnie Wald, who died in 1989 at a very young age. And uh, our daughter has remarried since and has two other children now, which we enjoy all of them. but. Uh, uh, Lonnie and Carrie had a son, and he has Down syndrome, which is, is a, he's a real blessing to us. He's in Special Olympics. In fact, he's in uh, on his way to Brookings this year, this right now as we speak, to the state Special Olympics games. So he uh, loves to be involved with basketball and swimming. He's quite a swimmer, and the uh, hundred yard dash. He's pretty good at running too, which surprised me, but uh, he's not, not much of a distance runner, but uh, short spurts, he's really good at it. And uh, he just this past year uh, stayed in dormitory at Presentation College in Aberdeen, was on his own, and is looking forward to uh, living in an apartment and uh, having a job of his own. So uh, I'm sure Lonnie would be proud of him. We're approaching the grave site of uh, two of my cousins who are still alive, uh, and they have their uh, grandfather, who's buried over here, had bought the lots for the whole family, whoever wanted to be buried in the area. So these graves are still unused at the present time. Uh, in fact, these two, Ronald and Donald, are twins, and they were instrumental Monday evening in cleaning up the cemetery for the project that we had here. So, this is uh, the gravesite of my dad's oldest brother, Chris, and his wife, Rosa. She was one of the oldest residents of the retirement home in Eureka for a long time. In fact, she was at, in the 
the retirement home that's, that was located on the lot that our present home is located. And so it's kind of neat to <clears throat> have that connection with, with her too. Uh, Chris died in 48. I was in college at the time. He was the uh, first one in the family, uh, siblings of my dad to, to die th that I knew of, you know, growing up. He had lost some before my time. So several of these lots back here yet are empty too, so that, uh, you know, for the families that haven't put up stones yet for, for themselves. So and then we'll go on. Were you close to Chris? Uh, he lived just a, two miles from where I live, uh, my farm stead was, yes. We weren't, uh, when you say close to him, we, we uh, visited, yes, but uh, it wasn't that close of age difference, I guess, mainly. So I had other uncles that I was much closer to. Uh, my dad's youngest brother who uh, lived in Washington State he was a forester and uh, got got to know him quite well and uh, visited him and had him come to our gob reunions and so got to know him much more so. And then uh, uh, some of my dad's sisters uh, uh, that uh, were closer that way, my dad worked with them more so than Chris. Being the oldest one, Chris was on his own long before my dad got married even, and so the age difference between my dad and Christian uh, was such that uh, they didn't have that close a relationship, you know, compared to the other siblings. So, and we can go on to my other uh, uncles and my dad's and mother's sites. We're, we're at the site of my, uh, one of my favorite aunts, uh, Aunt Katie we called her, Katharina is her name, and uh, she was the one I mentioned in the prior story that was at home yet in the sod house when the buffalo came and rubbed. In fact, she did an interview when my youngest daughter was in high school, she did interview on uh, Ancestry and and Katie did the, quite a lengthy interview for her. It was a school subject, so she was she was really special. She. Was she your favorite aunt? Well, it's, it was just her personality, I guess. It it was little things in life that she she uh, took care of. Uh, she hardly ever missed a birthday, and. Uh, they lived just a half a mile north of our homestead, you know, the, the original homestead. So we were close with them and we went to school with, with uh, all the cousins there and, and uh, worked, my dad worked with them quite often and, and uh, their children and, and uh, my brothers and myself would play together, trap gophers or whatever. And, just had a lot of fun together. They were the closest cousins, and so that's one of the reasons, I suppose. So, so. Uh, this site here is my father and mother, Friedrich and Lydia. Uh, Dad died in 75, just a year before we added the living room larger living room on the house. So he didn't get to see that, but uh, <clears throat> he farmed with me uh, until uh, last year that he was here, you know, so we got to be quite close. And my mother, uh, I was probably even closer because uh, I was her maid until until I was old enough and my older oldest brothers uh, were out in college or on their own, and I got to go out to do field work then. Uh, then mother, by that time, had my sister, who was eight years younger than I. So uh, 
I got out of housework and <laughs> really haven't cherished it since. <laughs> My wife probably doesn't like that, like to have me do more housework, but uh, I guess that goes with the territory. <laughs> so. Can you tell me what kind of person your father was? Uh, independent, self-sufficient. He had just a fourth grade education, but he was very good in math. It didn't take him long to uh, figure the capacity of a truck box or a grain bin or any such thing. You know, he could. Uh, he was very good. He was the township assessor for many years, so he had to had to be sharp on on his bookwork. And uh, uh, he was one of the leaders in our country church at St. John's, and uh, so he was quite involved all around. He was. He was on the board, Zion Church Board in Eureka when they added the educational unit to the local church here in town. So he was quite active that way too. So he was uh, very resourceful. Didn't, didn't have to go to town to get repair parts. He could make his own a lot of times. So we learned a lot from him. He, he loved farming, uh, probably why uh, he st stuck with it until his last years. He, he died of cancer, and he, so he, it, it was hard to lose him, but uh, I guess that's part of life. So, And my mother was uh, very, very uh, ambitious, too. She, I don't think there was a speck of dust that ever got away from her. <laughs> she was very clean that way, and... and uh, uh, oh, I don't know, just just really tidy and, and ambitious. She was never never one to sit around and just loaf, you know. She always had something to do, had big gardens and uh, different things. So a lot of chickens and did most of the, uh, most of the chore work, you know, when my dad was out in the field, she took care of the milking and all the chores. So. She was good at it. She she could milk two cows to anybody else's one. <laughs> so she was pretty quick that way. Which one would you say influenced your life more? Oh boy. They both probably influenced it equally uh, different areas of my life, you know. My dad uh, probably influenced me more with the independent and resourcefulness. Uh, I'm sure my mother's influence uh, had something to do with me being particular. Everything's supposed to be in its place and so on. But, uh, so I think there wasn't any one that had more influence. My mother probably earlier on when I was her maid definitely influenced me more than my dad. But uh, later on in life, uh, you know, my dad had more influence on me working with him, uh, you know, farming with him and working together that way, so. Okay. Then we've got a couple other uncles back here yet. Uh, my dad's brother that was at home with him is right behind my dad's site here. Jacob was his name and uh, <clears throat> Jacob and Fred, we called my dad Fred. Uh, it's the only way we knew him, never Friedrich. Uh, they were the two that were left to take care of the homestead when uh, uh, my grandfather died as a result of his uh, blood poisoning. And uh, so the two of them ran the farm and after their marriage they worked together with thrashing crew. You know, they had a thrashing machine together for a couple of years until they went independently then. And uh, so they were close uh, we were close with their their boys too we'd come to town together on Saturday nights or Sunday nights and uh, uh, just had a lot of fun together too so they had uh, uh, some girls so one of their daughters was in class with me in grade school and high school and uh, so I I got to know her quite well uh, so other than that I guess we'll go on to uh, the other brother, John, and he was uh, 
younger than my dad, about uh, three or four years younger, and he uh, he lived southeast of the tree claim, the uh, uh, about two miles southeast of where I lived, and uh, until he moved, he he liked to deal with horses. He loved horses and. Uh, Probably one of his downfalls that he horse traded, and and, and uh, so he uh, moved on. He, he sold a farm, I guess, or uh, whatever, and moved on to other businesses. So he was wasn't in the area, but uh, they did move to Eureka sometime, and I was closer to one of their sons then uh, for for many years before I got married. You know, we the. Uh, their son was my age and ended up in Mowbridge as an MDU employee and visited them quite well. We were to go to into the Army in World War II together, but uh, I was deferred then because of farming. My dad needed help at home, but he, had, he was inducted and consequently married a German girl and brought her back here and we got to be very close friends with him still are with her. So it's a interesting, interesting life. So I guess that's about it, unless you have any other questions.